Here we consider the market for whooping cough vaccine. So all of us got this vaccine when we were younger and vaccines really are an excellent example of a market that has a positive externality or a positive spillover effect. So for this example, the supply curve is really simple. It's just supply price equals quantity supplied. So there's our supply curve. It has a y-intercept of zero. The demand curve has a y-intercept of 100 and a slope of negative three. So demand price is equal to 100 minus three times quantity, quantity demanded. And the free market outcome is gonna be here where supply equals demand. Right? And um, again, vaccines exhibit positive externalities. So by that we mean that if one person goes and gets vaccinated, right, they're gonna be protected from the disease, but so is, so are the people around them um, through what's called herd immunity in this particular case when we're talking about uh, vaccines. So even the people who aren't actually paying for the vaccine, getting the vaccine, are benefiting from those who are, right? And the market is not internalizing this positive spillover effect, right? Again, the supply curve is just representing the private marginal cost of vaccines, of producing vaccines, and the demand curve is reflecting the private marginal benefit to those actually receiving the vaccine, right? It's not considering the um the positive externality if it was then this market would look different um so actually let's start by uh calculating the equilibrium q star p star so we said supply equal to demand supply is just q and demand is 100 minus 3q so the quantity here is 25 and P star ends up being a nice symmetric 25 as well. So the vaccines cost $25 each, and there's 25 of them, or 25,000, if you wanna be a little more realistic about the market size. All right, so now let's think about what this market would get, get us to um, relative to a quantity of 25 if the positive externality was internalized. So much like with a negative externality where we think of that as adding to the cost, with a positive externality, this is a benefit, right? So you can think of it as increasing the marginal benefit of consumption. So really the true benefit is higher something like this, where we have the private benefit plus the positive externality, right? And so I've shifted this graph up by the quantity of the externality. And of course, again, the major challenge here is determining how big is that shift in the demand curve? How big is the externality in dollar terms? How much do we value that herd immunity that's generated by each person that gets a vaccine, right? Now, assuming we can figure out that value, right, the market really should be getting us to this equilibrium here. So we'll call this QO for Q optimal, right? And at Q optimal, the true marginal benefit is being equated to the marginal cost. This is in contrast to what we have at Q star, where only the private marginal benefit is being equated to the private marginal cost. And so this is um, gonna lead to a market failure in the, in the free market outcome here, Q star, to see that we again consider all the transactions that occur between Q star and Q naught. So um, between those two quantities, we have the supply curve that's telling us the marginal cost of each of those vaccines. And then we have the green demand curve telling us the marginal benefit of each of those vaccines. So we see that the true marginal benefit is actually greater than the marginal cost. 
And so we really would want the market to keep going past Q star all the way to Q optimal in order to generate all the consumer producer surplus that occurs between these two quantities. Right, so when the market stops at Q star, it's failing to efficiently allocate resources. It's failing to maximize um, consumer and producer surplus, right? So here we have a market failure. So an important question is then how can we correct this market failure? Is there a potentially a role for the government to get the quantity up to encourage consumption and production of vaccines, right? And this one's a little tricky because so far in the semester, we've really only looked at policies that tend to reduce the number of transactions, not increase them, right? But having said that, um, we can consider tax policy as a potential solution here. And rather than imposing a normal tax, which would decrease the number of transactions even below Q star, we could impose a negative tax or what we call a subsidy that should have the reverse effect and increase market size. So let's take a look at what a subsidy looks like and then we can see that it really matches up nicely with what we're trying to do here. All right, so on the next slide here, I'm going to draw just a new market and show you what a subsidy looks like or a negative tax. Okay, so I'm gonna draw two graphs. One is gonna be just a regular tax and then the other one is gonna be a subsidy. So this will be a tax and this will be a subsidy. All right, so we have price and quantity, price and quantity, and we'll set everything up the same, supply, demand, supply and demand. Okay, and we'll start at our equilibrium, Q star, P star. All right, and then in a regular tax, right, we, one way to impose that tax is by shifting up supply. The other way is to shift down the demand curve so that the tax acts like a decrease in the marginal benefit of consuming the product. So let's go that route in this example. So we shift down the demand curve by the amount of the tax. So this new demand curve is equal to the original one minus the tax. So the outcome is then a lower number of transactions, QT, okay, and that lower number of transactions is um, is accomplished by creating a price distortion for producers and consumers. So producers now get a lower price while consumers pay a higher price, right? And so the higher price to consumers is going to reduce quantity demanded while the lower price for producers is gonna reduce the quantity supplied. So both quantity demanded and quantity supplied fall down to QT, right? And again, the gap between the two prices, the consumer and producer price, that's the amount of the tax. So let's say that's like a $5 tax, right? Now let's consider how a subsidy works and see what's different there. So with a subsidy, we're doing the opposite. Instead of the government taking away money, the government is actually giving money. So that subsidy would increase the marginal benefit of every unit consumed. So we can shift this up by the amount of the subsidy. So let's just go with a parallel $5 and we shift up the demand curve. So this is demand plus the subsidy of $5, right? And now we see a new outcome in the market where rather than the quantity falling with a subsidy, we'll call it sub for subsidy, we see an increase in the number of transactions. And this happens because, again, the price is gonna be distorted for consumers and producers, but in the opposite way of the previous, of the regular tax. 
So here, producer prices are actually going to go up. The producers are going to get more money for each vaccine. So they're going to be willing to produce more vaccines. At the same time, consumers are going to be paying less. So they're going to want to buy more if they're consuming or if they're paying less. Right. And the gap between the two prices is being covered by the government, by the subsidy, the five dollars per vaccine uh, produced and vaccine consumed. So with the vaccine and the positive externality associated with the vaccine, we saw that the optimal quantity that we wanted the market to get to was here. But the market was only getting us as far as Q star and it was failing to make the rest of these transactions happen. So the subsidy can be used to push the market towards the optimal outcome. And we can consider other possible policies that could increase the quantity um, of vaccines being created and, and consumed. Um, so right off the bat, we might think of a price ceiling as a way to encourage vaccine consumption, right? Price ceilings will make the vaccine cheaper for consumers. And so consumers will want to get more vaccines, right? And, and on the face of it, that seems like a good idea. But if we really complete the analysis on that plan, we'll see that it's not a good plan, right? So let's impose our price ceiling here. So here's a binding price ceiling, right? It's below the equilibrium, right? So the market can't get all the way to P star. It's going to stop at the price ceiling. So let's see what happens. Well, if the, if the cost of a vaccine is cheaper, then yes, that's going to encourage consumers to go get vaccinated. However, at a lower price, vaccine producers aren't going to be making as many vaccines. And so we're actually going to have a shortage of vaccines, right? And not only that, but we'll have moved the quantity even lower, even further from the optimal quantity. Remember, the optimal quantity is up here, right? We want to encourage vaccine consumption, but instead we've actually reduced the number of people getting vaccinated. So again, a subsidy would be the way to go in this um, type of situation where we have a positive externality and we're trying to encourage consumption.